Welcome to Happily's webinar that's going to take you behind the scenes on how we produce the VC Platform Summit. And we're really excited today to share some stories and lessons learned and expertise around the event and hope that it'll inspire you on your event programs. Some of the things we're going to hit on today include the space design, our strategy for scaling the event, and metrics. Hi everyone, and I also want to like give like a big like high five and shout out to Josh Goodfield, um, who's the executive director at VC Platform, and quick context on how Happily even got connected to VC Platform. So Corey Bolotsky is on the board, and he produced and put together as a mastermind behind the summit for last year. And it, Corey is someone that we had worked with before. It was a really gargantuan lift to make the summit happened last year and like, and it was a great success. And this year he was really stoked that he got board approval to bring in a production partner to elevate that. We've been doing a lot of work with VC platform folks in particular. So we came in as the gold sponsor, you know, for VC platform. It's been amazing. We are inheriting uh, some of the program elements, you know, from last year. And our challenge is really like, how do we take this program and make it you know, better for the next year. So we took all of this information, these data that Corey gave to us and really created an event identity and synthesized all of this information into like six guiding principles of like what the VC Summit experience is, you know, based off of just reviewing how you all interact, like on the digital platform, and we're bringing that to life. This is the type of experience that we're designing for. This should be a highly participatory because it is a flat community. Everyone like has great ideas to jump in. We should always have lots of spaces and times for people to be able to participate you know kind of balancing that where you have this like grassroots community feel but also and this and that startup feel right but also still having like a tight brand presentation was something that I want to make sure that everybody always kept in mind daring to be different was really critical whenever you're organizing events and especially like when you have short timelines and timelines get shorter and shorter and things get you know really pressured it's easy to fall back on what you or other people usually do we're bold we, it's okay for us to try something new and to dare to be different less about being like sort of talked at but like more about like starting a conversation on the stage but keeping that conversation going. They really wanted to make the, create a sense of FOMO, like you have to be there in person. The real challenge that we had just touching on like the problems with scale, this is the problems with scale, you know, is like the big question that we were put just two months, you know, before the show really was from the board. They asked us, can we scale from 350 to 700 people? Like this, the show is incredibly successful. Um, the registrations are through the roof. At Happily, like we work on projects from like 2,500 to $25 million. Generally, whenever somebody's asking us like, can we do something? The answer is almost always yes, there is a way with asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Once I thought that question was more, should we? That's really the challenge I think that we wrestled with as a group. And so look, the more the merrier, the more connections that people can make. It's just going to be a more vibrant, exciting show. Also, the more folks that are there, we can have more multi-track, actually start to set it for subsequent years so that we can have like bigger shows, more people. And when you're thinking, should we be spending our time at this stage thinking about that? Would it be better for us to be thinking about something else? But what we really wound up being like the deal breaker, you know, for us was there was more risk of us feeling like we were sellouts on the VC platform, like event that we were selling out, like just to try to like get people in and tickets and we're trying to fit something in. On the other hand, just being like, we have a sold out show and this is just really successful. We built that FOMO where you want to experience it in person. We landed then on 525, which is still a notable increase. You know, we had over 40% increase in registrations from the last year, 5% overall in the community. The community, the platform community has been growing. What's the percentage of folks who came from the total group uh, last year versus the potential percentage of 525 that would come in for this year? Overall, we kept the budget tight. We marginally increased the budget instead of we're looking at like 2x or more of the cost. You're having to double the venues, double the teams. 
We basically have several breakout spaces and the main stage and the interstitial spaces throughout the venue. And I think the main challenge was figuring out how we can get people to move from one place to the other and make sure that everyone was also able to watch the show on the main stage at the same time. The main areas that we wanted to activate were the number two, which is where the main stage was, number three, which is where a big like con convene space. And this is kind of where all the collaboration interaction and like other conversations that were happening during the event. We worked really closely with the venue to try and figure out how many people we could fit into each of these spaces and reworking the furniture layouts and just the space work for that. We basically established a distinct visual identity for the event specifically. So we crafted a fresh new package using the VC platform branding and color packet palettes. Um, but we introduced some new elements and iconography and some specific event specific logos. And we also integrated a lot of industry insights into the screen since we had so many screens throughout the venue and have little points of where talking points and connection points. And here you can kind of see that like the visual identity developed over time. At first we kind of started off with a little bit more of a crazy design and then we developed a little smoother design and from there we developed something that was more playful and fun and also still simplistic that went along with the brand's identity. The venue we used, Convene, has this amazing video wall that spans three of the four walls of the room. This is how the venue proposed we use their grand hall. And this is how we used their grand hall. We literally brought a platform into VC platform. It was really dynamic and really fun. So this is also one of those things that Happily likes to do is constraints breed creativity. I'm going to talk about the camera plot because that's a big part of my role at Happily. My interest when I was at TED was always to say we want everyone in that theater to feel like they have the best seat in the house. And we want everyone who watches the video after the fact to feel like they have the best seat in the house. One way we would accomplish that was with multiple cameras. We wanted to film it for three purposes, to send video feeds up top to the ribbon screen, to also send video feeds outside of this grand hall into some of those other breakout spaces, to send out a simulcast feed to people who were offsite, who you know wouldn't be watching it in that space, but maybe just watching it online. We were allowed to use three cameras and they were pan, tilt, zoom, remote controlled cameras. So we had a booth off to the side where someone was using a joystick to zoom in and out of the cameras. For the most part, they were pretty much all set to wide so that we could get a sense of who all the speakers were. Convene was a new space and they had built six cameras into it, but we didn't have access to all of those yet. And the more cameras we had would have given us more complimentary footage. I always like remember, you know, try to remember like you just really cannot scale what, what you can't measure. We're doing an event trends report with VC platform. And one of the questions that we asked on the survey is, uh, and this is preliminary data, but we go like, are you collecting actual data around your events? And like 41% of people aren't collecting any data. And I feel that there's this, just a big opportunity for anybody who does want to scale their event programs. You have to start measuring things. And even if it's, and especially if it's like just one thing, we asked folks what they were measuring and what they wish they were actually measuring. Folks just don't know how do you go about measuring ROI on an event? How do you measure brand influence off of an event? When you're trying to scale something, it's always best to think about things like one metric, like at a time, at least prioritizing them one metric at a time. Things that we measure when we're looking at ROI is we actually look at the LTV, which is something that I think most folks, I just want to call that out, most folks aren't thinking about because with events, they're really like life changing experiences and these relationships, they last for a long period of time. And the actual sort of conversion point on an event experience is usually longer if it's not like a small like consumer, uh, consumer product. 
a majority of the respondents are saying that they're spending more than a quarter of their time, you know, organizing events and programs. We love, would love to have a conversation with anyone who is feeling like this, you know, where you're spending way too much time on your event programs, help work with you and like take all of these like challenges and issues that come up that are just like headaches and things that like are the unknowns and the known problems and move through them happily and have a great event at the end of the day. Thanks so much and have a wonderful afternoon.